Welcome back, my friends. My name is Eric, and this is Rome. And it is a cold, blustery day here in the Hundred Acre Wood. So we're going to uh, we're going to play some we're going to play some games. So I'm hoping to get a couple episodes recorded today. I tried to get a couple episodes recorded yesterday, but due to some technical issues, mostly caused by me, um, I didn't get very far. But today we're going to continue on. Last yesterday, we met um, um, Hieronymus Doloroso here. And we managed to uh, continue to get the services of Argenta, our, our sister of battle, for the near future. Um, statue undoubtedly depicts Parseus Dewayne, the legendary rogue trader who founded Footfall. Can we, can we see his head? Um, he's not very attractive, is he? he? He looks a lot like Fernando, wherever Fernando is. My, my, my own personal servitor. Very, very similar. Um, and there's a piece of paper here somewhere. Goods. Um, another, uh... Oh, we've already seen that one. I'm just gonna leave that one. Um, no, I'm gonna pick it up, because otherwise it'll show up on the map. Uh, and I'll have to, I'll have to see it later. Oh, and they close this again. I don't know why Owlcat does that. They do it in Pathfinder, too. This always closes on you. Don't close this, guys. Leave this open. I want it open. I want it large. I want to be able to see it all the time. I want that. That is, that's important for that to be there. Um, that wasn't what I was looking for, but it's okay. Um, what is it? It is interesting. Oh, there we go. Cargo management. Ah, okay. I don't know if we've been, I think we've seen this screen before. So we've got a hundred percent, we've got a, a ranged weaponry one ready to ship, a melee weaponry one in descent, two melee weapon ones, an armor kit. Um, we've got a little bit of uniform, um, another melee one ready to set. Okay. We're doing okay. Um, and there's information on our ship. I assume we can get other ships as we go on, but I don't actually know that. Um, huh. We'll have to see. 1.6 kilometers long, 0.3 kilometers of beam at fins, approximately. 6 megatons, approximately, and 26,000 crew. Pretty cool. All right. Um, I think we need to go back this direction, I think, is my goal for today. I um, have to figure out how to... Looks like if we go back here, we can get up there. Oh, what's back over here? Mishmash of cables and devices. Was there was there a roll, or do we just is that all it is? No idea. Doesn't look like there was a roll on more or anything like that. It's just a mishmash of cables. I could have sworn I saw that it was a roll earlier. Maybe I already checked it and, and we failed the roll, and so now it's just telling us the basic bit there. All right. A hum of low voices quiets, and a dozen gazes shift to you. First mate Dagon. Tall man with a shaved head is rubbing his hands together nervously. His opulent clothes are nearly bursting at the seams on his muscular body, and his expression is forbidding, forbiddingly grim. Still, he's trying to put on an air of friendliness. Greetings. You must be... He glances at a scroll in his mechanical hand implant. Master Fidelio? All the guests have arrived. You're the last on the list. We wouldn't wait... Uh, we couldn't well start without you. Your presence is absolutely vital. Um, we can say you must have me confused, but you know what? We're here incognito. Let's see what we can find out. Hopefully the uh, actual Fidelio doesn't show up anytime soon. So we're going to play along. Of course, I'm Fidelio. Uh, he puts on a broad smile and catches himself and quickly frowns once more. Uh, please, <clears throat> we can talk later. Chaplin is about to begin. What is this tomfoolery? Abelar grumbles, but not before making sure the man is out of earshot. Uh, let's go to make an awareness check. Um, it is a 100% chance I have failed this roll a couple of times. <laughs> so, awareness plus 60, DC 20, 100% <clears throat> chance. Let us fail it. Hey, we made it. The gathering you found yourself at seems refined and respectable at first glance. The decorations and the attendees' cl clothes speak of wealth, and so does the location, which isn't far from the Leisure's residence. But you notice that most of those gathered are of rather imposing physique. Many of them have scars and military-grade implants. Several of the guests look like they're covering the exit. A few are clearly carrying concealed weapons. Your appearance has definitely attracted everyone's attention. Just about every guest here keeps glancing at you, and some are clearly watching your every move, even though they are trying not to show it. <clears throat> I wonder who this Fidelio is, and why they cannot start proceedings until he or she reappears. Um... Let's uh, just join the attendees. I mean, the rest of it is just us talking, but we don't have any answers, obviously. So 
Uh, join the attendees. I want to see what this is about. Oh, what a terrible, sorrowful day. We pay our respects to the life and soul of Football Society, a loyal servant to the Imperium, a generous benefactor who spared no expense to keep the fire of faith burning and an example to all future generations. The most noble and unforgettable Master Bellardo. This loss, the fussy administratum clerk speaks in a strained voice. It keeps peeking at the paper on text with, with text on it. His speech drags on and on, blending into a monotonous cascade of the praises of the late Master Bellardo. Twenty minutes have passed. So, let us offer a prayer to the Emperor of the repose of Master Bellardio's soul and the prosperity of his heirs. Now, I pass you our most revered chaplain. Ah, oh, a formidable-looking man dressed in the attire of an ecclesiarchy missionary glares at the gathered crowd. And here you all are, you vultures. Let's offer a prayer, then. If you think the Emperor, or the messenger of his will, in other words, myself, does not see into your vile souls, you are solely mistaken. The chaplain looks at you and gives a slight nod. I wasn't referring to Master Fidelio. At least Dents himself wanted to see him at his funeral. But the rest? I know every one of you. And I'd be astonished to discover anyone here who truly mourns his loss. So go ahead, pray for Bellardo's soul. Keep soon, the flames will take him. A fitting end for a life like his. May the Emperor keep his soul. Without another word, chaplain makes the sign of the Aquila and pointedly turns away from the attendees. All right, let's see what we can do. Um, we've got something to look at here. Where does zero? Duty prevails. Oh, and this, once again, is not... Uh, this doesn't always update like you expect it to. Do, 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 do. Odd smell to Zamsek. Very likely the drink has been poisoned. Um, let's talk to Dagon again. The tall man who welcomes you at the entrance is shifting foot from foot to foot and keeps glancing around with a gloomy expression. He nods to you sympathetically. Master Fidelio, uh, you never introduced yourself. I'm Dagon Othio. I was first mate on Denza's ship. I mean, Master Bellardo. How did Bellardo die? Badly. He went downhill real fast. Just a year ago, he was still living it up, storming the slum asteroids to shoot riffraff and mutants. Then all of a sudden, he was done. His old wounds had caught up with him, and he had plenty of those, both from the old days and more recent ones, like when somebody tried to bump him off. Twelve years back, I think it was. Hmm. I have to go. Servitors, ceremony guests. Um, Cass Bellardo. Okay, same last name. A man of indeterminate age turns to you and sighs loudly. You can tell by his breath that he came to the ceremony after indulging in one or two glasses of strong drink. Ah, oh, Master Fidelio, I've heard so much about you. Here you are in the flesh. Well, we haven't been introduced. <clears throat> Pardon me, Cass Bellardo. I have the honor of being the only child of the deceased. He sends a mocking salute in the direction of the coffin. You don't seem particularly grief-stricken. If I was the one lying in that box, he wouldn't be crying his eyes out either. Cass bites out with sudden acidity. He takes a moment to calm himself. A son's father's a son's feelings are complicated. I wasn't a good son. Old Denz wasn't a good father. But I do miss him in my own way, yes. He always seemed timeless to me. Not just a bag of meat and ugly ambitions like the rest of us are. Uh, what did he die of? Age, debauchery, old wounds. By the end, my old dad was more implant than man, especially after the assassination attempt. People tried to kill him, you see, about 12 years ago. Uh, what has he heard about me? That you were very close with, uh, <clears throat> forget it. I didn't mean anything by it. Just making conversation. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. All right. <clears throat> um, what do we got this direction? We got some goods. Well, of course, we're going to go pick those up. Okay. Pack his cargo. Once again, see, it's not not keeping us where we want to be. There we go. Replenished our uh, our kits there. Um, more over here. Oh, my God. Whoops. Um, looks like a deliberately set trap meant to collapse a part of the building from anybody greedy like myself. Well, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Uh, there's a clerk there, chaplain. Um, up close, the chaplain leaves an even stronger impression. A tall, burly man whose face and hands bear numerous scars. An entire visage seems to tell a story of many heretics who met their end upon their encounter with this adept of the true faith. 
Chaplain gives you a friendly nod, but his gaze is intense, like he's trying to se get a sense of who you are. Pleasure to meet you, Master Fidelio. I prefer to go by Chaplain. It is both my name and my occupation. It's funny how, despite being Denzes, that is to say, Master Blardo's closest associating confessor, I've never heard of you, the man he chose to be his sole heir. I'm glad, of course, that the inheritance didn't go to the others, the vultures, but I'm still curious. Why you? Oh, persuasion. This is another one. I have been through this section probably four times. This is probably the maybe the fifth, fourth or fifth time. I don't know. I've been through it a bunch. Uh, I've never, ever actually succeeded at this role, despite being a 70% 70 persuasion with a DC of zero and a 100% chance. Let's see if we can get it this time. Hey, we succeeded. The chaplain nods. Unsurprisingly, Dens did like remarkable people, and he knew how to get people to like him. Uh, given your speech during the ceremony, take you're not a fan of the other attendees. Uh, I'm a missionary, and the truth of the Imperium speaks through me, so I see no point in pretense. All who have gathered here have one goal to bite a chunk out of Denz's estate. Ambition and aspirations of wealth are not immoral in themselves, but uh, it's just that I'm sickened by the thought that such a great man is left behind nothing but a pile of human refuse. His son is a drunk and a weakling. His friend, Dagon, the one who greeted you at the entrance, is a dim-witted brute with an incredibly bloated ego. His widow made off on the family yacht in the direction of the maw while his body was still warm with an entourage of five brawny, good-looking young fellows. I'd like to believe that he didn't choose you as his heir on a, on a whim, Master Fidelio. At least you had the guts to come here, into a nest of vipers who despise you because Denz's money and property slipped through their fingers. I respect that kind of audacity. And so did he. Uh, I have a strong suspicion someone here wants me dead. Uh, you don't say, how can this be? Someone wants the sole heir of a tremendous fortune dead in a place where other contenders deprived of these riches have gathered? No. All right. If you, Master Fidelia, really are worthy of Denz's name, you'll deal with these minor vasectitudes. Considering this, my, consider this my blessing. The Emperor protects. Anyone who deserves it, that is. Uh, on the matter of the inheritance, uh, when can I claim it? Uh, you just can't wait, can you? After the funeral, Denz will be delivered into flames, and we will announce his last will and testament, and you will officially come into your inheritance. All right. Thank you for speaking to me. All right. I think I saw the clerk down here. Let's go talk to him. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Uh, never mind. We're here. We'll talk to him. We'll talk to him. <clears throat> a master fidelio, my regards. All right. Uh, the little girl up here seems to be out of place. And again, I've done this three or four times. A uh, girl dressed in expensive clothes raises her sad little face to you and says in a serious voice, Hello. Uh, what are you doing here? Um, hiding? I thought I was going to cry, and I didn't want anyone to see. Uh, my name is Adelia Bellardo. It's my grandpa in there, in the box. Argenta's face softens. She reaches out and gently strokes Adelia's head. The tears will pass, Adelia. The tears will pass. The strength will return, and your courage will never leave you. <clears throat> Adelia tries to smile, then just nods seriously. Oh, where are your parents? My dad is Cas Bellardo. He's with the guests. My mom ran away. They told me she hates Dad and Grandpa. I guess she hates me, too. I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't even miss her anymore. I miss Grandpa. He was the nicest. She presses her lips together and lets out a quiet, very unchildlike sigh. Uh, have you heard the name Fidelio? Uh, it's someone my dad is very mad at. But dad is always mad at everyone. At grandpa, mom, Dagon, chaplain. All right, I have to go. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's go take a look at the body itself. <clears throat> Whoever prepared the body of a gray-haired man living in the coffin, they did a good job. Even in death, he looks majestic. Abelard maintains a grave expression befitting the occasion until he sees the face of the deceased. He frowns. He peers at it with suspicion. Then he grasps, gasps, astonished, almost dazed. I'll be. This is quite the meeting. If it can be called such under the circumstances. Um, again, 100%. <clears throat> uh, I think I passed it once. Every other time I failed it. I have made a bug report on these, by the way. Um, it is important if you play alphas and betas. If you do find things, if you do you do submit bug reports, right? I mean, that's the whole reason you're, in theory, <clears throat> you they've given you access. I mean, really, it's a marketing ploy, but hopefully you hopefully you help out with that. <clears throat> anyway, our check succeeded this time. The plant implants left in the deceased body speak of his high standing. Expensive tech is typically extracted from the dead, and only the most prominent and wealthy avoid this fate upon their death. Well, there you go. That right there is a little bit of a. Uh, uh, for, for warning? What's the what's the word that tells you that they're hinting at something to come? Whatever that word is. Um, typically extracted from the dead. Um, Abelard, do you know this man? Do I? <clears throat> I could tell you all about this man, but the words I'd use would be improper for a funeral. 
This, your lordship, is Jerry Can Dens, who they referred to as Dens consistently and continually through this whole thing. Known back in the day as one of the most notorious pirates in the Coronas Expanse. They nicknamed him Jerry Can for his habit of having a jug or two of Promethium on hand. He did love burning things. Oh, yes, he was a menace back then. How long ago was it? 60 years ago? I was serving my last days in the Navy when news came of his latest attack. So that makes, you know, <clears throat> Abelard what? 100? 120? All right, serving his last days in the Navy. Career guy, you know, 40, 60 with, with the advancements that they have. Abelard distractedly runs a hair and can through his hair. Well, well, there was a time when the sight of Jerry Can in a coffin would have been enough to make me dance. Quite literally. By the throne, I would have danced a jig on the spot. But now, uh, I don't know. No more jumping into the warp right from under the cruiser's nose, eh, you old beast? Who would have thought I'd be at your funeral? Uh, this is very grand for a pirate's funeral. Is this normal for footfall? Folks on footfall are known to turn a blind eye to many things, but even the locals aren't so unscrupulous as to honor pirate scum a few paces away from the Leisure's residence. But no one has heard of Dents for so many decades. I barely recognized him myself, and I've seen his face on pics a fair few times back then. I assume he retired and started a uh, more or less honest life under a new name. What were they calling him? Master Bellardo? <clears throat> now I remember. Reverend Hieronymus mentioned the name Master Bellardo as one of the biggest donors to the temple. All right. <clears throat> Step away. See, this time it... Nope, it still didn't stay with us. Seems to lose it whenever there's a dialogue. Book of Remembrance. Um, among the words of parting and praise for the deceased, a fresh entry stands out. Repentance. And a signature underneath. Fid. The, sign the letters are crabbed and barely legible. So Fidelia has been here. Interesting. Okay. Um, and it just gave us an update <clears throat> on... All right, that's the one for him. That's to go over there. Gave it, oh, here we go. Who is the mysterious final guest? The answer to the key understanding was happening. Order Repentance could have some connection with Fidelio Mystery. Someone, possibly Fidelio, left a strange note in the Book of Remembrance. Fidelio is the heir. Uh, ceremony guests do not know who he is or what he or she looks like. Uh, they want Fidelio dead. Okay, so we have to uncover Fidelio's identity, and then, I mean, more or less we know what's happening, so that's fine. Okay, it popped up here, and I got distracted by the two pop-ups at the same time, and somehow managed to not read either of them. <clears throat> All right, clerk, you hear someone delicately clearing their throat. The source of the sound turns to be the administrative clerk you saw next to the chaplain. His clothes are neat and impeccably pressed. <clears throat> Excuse me. His face, however, reveals extreme nervousness bordering on fear. My good Master Fidelia, I do hope you're satisfied with the services provided by our establishment. Uh, then he leans in a little closer. I beg of you, help me. But please, keep your voice down. We won't let, can't let anyone hear us. It's a matter of life and death. Uh, oh, what's the matter? Clerk wipes the sweat from his eye, from his brow nervously. Please understand, it's very difficult to get by on footfall on my wages. And Imperial Regulation 4030-8L on post-mortal service workers on peripheral worlds directly prohibits the chief operator of the crematorium from leaving the workplace for any reason other than sleep, food, severe illness, and the ministration of sacraments. Therefore, I am forced, practically forced, to look for other sources of income that allow me to stay within the walls of this here establishment. I set up a small, a little, shall we say, enterprise. I replace the implants of the deceased with identical replicas and sell them to the right people when I have a shipment ready. As we read earlier, usually implants are removed. <clears throat> so it's not just him that's doing this. This is pretty much Imperium wide, I would guess. I had just prepared the newest batch of superb, unique implants of the highest quality, but I got careless. I used my very first sick leave in four standard years. And it was on that very day that Master Bellardo passed away and his family was quick to organize a ceremony in our crematorium. I simply didn't have time to prepare and now, my container full of goods, it's in the furnace. And if you don't help me, they're going to burn it at any minute. Um, wait, so you hid valuables in the crematorium's furnace? Well, I mean, to be fair, that makes sense. I've been hiding them for 10 years now, and quite successfully, I might add. Only the richest citizens can afford the services of a crematorium, and sadly, they don't die all that often. Usually, I sell the goods before the next body arrives, but I got unlucky this time. Help me, I beg of you. Uh, okay, what do you, what do you need of me? Uh, no, no, hold on. I will help you on the following conditions. You see, I am, most definitely, Master Fidelio. I'm afraid I've misplaced some of my documents. 
If you make me a copy of everything you can find in the archives that has my name on it, you'll get your contraband. Of course, of course, we'll do. You'll be most pleased with the results. Just help me for throne's sake. All right. Uh, clerk promises to bribe with documents made in the name. Yada, yada, yada. All right. Throne preserve you. Make it look like you're just having a look around. It's a lot easier for you to wander into a restricted area without arousing suspicion than it is for me. Find the container. It's in the far corner. It's not restricted for him, though. I mean, this is his job. <laughs> I don't know why it's more... I mean, it's only restricted for me, not for him. So, uh, I don't know. That seems a little weird. But that's okay. Um, and as I recall, this this has always a very long, weird gap that, that takes a while before it even takes you to the loading screen, which is always very, very quick. <laughs> Interestingly enough. Um, the clerk's got a gun on his back. Oh, there's a trap. Okay, well, we'll move to here. And then we'll see if we can demolish, uh, disarm it. It uses a de demolish. I don't know if we got it or not. Uh, we successfully. Uh, I failed at it most of the time. Uh, and it usually just goes off, but it doesn't hurt anybody. So I don't know. Um, Self-firing trap wasn't placed here by accident. All right, I'm going to do a quick save here real fast. Um, it does not auto save um, when changing zones all of the time. Sometimes it does. This one, it does not. So the first time I recorded this episode, um, I got through this bit, minus the, the Hieronymus Dolorosa bit, um, came in here and we'll, and I died. And I'll show you how and where I died. Um, and then went to reload and realized that the last autosave was leaving the Legia's Palace, where it did do an autosave because of the zone change. Um, so sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So. Um, I guess I shouldn't have to say this, but if you're playing an alpha or a beta, or realistically, even a game at full release, an Owlcat game especially, save often. Learn what your autosave is. All right, we've got um, space reserve for coffins, heavy plasteel door to the furnace, that will get inside. I don't think there was anything over here. Don't see anything. Um, there's a door over here. that is locked and we don't have a way to unlock it at the moment. I don't know where we go. Well, I guess we came in from here. There's no space for it to go anywhere there, right? That was, actually it's backwards, right? Because this would have been the front, right? The entrance there, the body was up there. We walked around and would have come in from the side, right? Not the back. There's not enough room for it. It's, it's, it's hugely bigger inside than it is outside. And we came in from a different direction. Man, it is, it is Doctor Who all over the place. Um, that's a little... Uh, come on, guys. Attention to detail. Attention to detail. Right? You should have had us come in from this door, which would have made the distance at least a little closer. Realistically, we walked, you know, this much. You know, maybe, well, maybe we did. I don't know. But we should have come in from this door. This door should be the locked door that leads to whatever else is happening. Um, is what it is. That's not a bug. Um... I mean, it is in my opinion, but it's not. <laughs> All right, so I guess now it is impossible to just have one person go through here, which annoys me. Um, for something like this, everybody else should stay out to protect and make sure the door doesn't close um, while one person goes in to retrieve it. Um, unfortunately, uh, it won't let us do that. So we'll just go ahead. Uh, and it doesn't let us do that on purpose because it's necessary for its trap plot to go. Um, so tech use. Looks like they repurposed the nozzle of an ancient station engine for the needs of the crematorium. Uh, we can hop back out. So what's going to happen here is we are going to pick this up. The door is going to close and the crematorium is going to fire up. And this is where I died the first time. Um, I wasn't paying attention. It gave me the clues I needed to get out of it, but I missed them. Um, and so we'll, 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 I'll show you kind of how I, how I did it. So Rogue Trader, we get the gear door closes. Oh my gosh, no, whoever would have seen this happen? This fires up and we start to burn. So now at some point, damn it, shoot the floors in the wall. The door's fortified. All right, so I'm going to just go ahead and, I don't know, not use that one. Let's use a, a bolter, right? No, the bolter, come on, let me select it. Can I, can I not select the bolter? Um, that seems like a bug. She's got that one. Why can I not select another weapon? 
Uh, can somebody else select another weapon? No, no, we can't change weapon groups. Interesting. I, I think that's a bug. Um, let's go Alt B. I think it's Alt B. Saving. It will save when you make a bug report. Um, uh, when, oops, hold on. When trapped in the crematorium, I am unable to change weapons so that I can actually shoot at the walls and floor. When shooting at, hold on, this, this goes on farther. This is kind of two bug reports. At the floor, guns didn't do anything. I had to use a grenade to break through. Okay. And that is true. That's what happened to me earlier. So, <clears throat> so thank you for reporting above. All right. So we're taking damage here. Uh, it still doesn't show anything yet. At a moment, hold on. Uh, let's grab everybody. Um, let's go here. We're going to shoot there. See, now it shows it. Hey, it let us go through that time with the plasma gun. Nice. Last time I shot through, it didn't. none of the guns worked. I threw a grenade, and that blew it up. So... <clears throat> it's kind of a cool cloak we got. They're on fire, on fire. Put them out, put them out, quick. Voices come to you through streams of something thick and foul. Your eyes are covered with whatever the unbidden savior saw uh, fit to splash over your head. At least you can make out the silhouette of a vagrant, dressed in rags, leaning over you. He throws up his hands. Your lordiness, are you all right? <laughs> your lordiness. Did you hit anything? Any bad burns? You fell right through the ceiling. That's mighty high up. Um, who are you? What are you doing down here? Uh, we live here is all your lordiness. You see, that's my favorite title now, your lordiness. You see, these are old tunnels. They dug them back in Parsimius Dwayne's time, right under through the asteroids. It's a little stuffy down here, but it's warmer up in the big, but it's warmer than up in the big place palaces on the surface. Uh, and it sure is warm under the crematorium's furnace. They barely burn anyone up there, but when they do fire it up often enough, and that's good for us, uh, but they do fire it up often enough, and that's good for us. Sure, sometimes an odd smell makes it through the vents, like they're making roast. Makes your mouth water, but what can you do? That's the cost of comfort for you. Here's kind of a gruesome story for you. I used to have to do classes at a place called, uh, in Maryland. Um, we called it Fort Redneck. Um, Frednick, excuse me. It's in Frederick, Maryland. Uh, and I have forgotten the name of the actual post. But they happen to do research there on infectious diseases. So it's government, it's an army base. But they have one of the big centers for infectious disease research, yada, yada, yada. And they do a lot of their testing on animals, uh, monkeys specifically, uh, because of their close relationship to humans, I'm sure. And um, obviously, when you're studying infectious diseases, things die. And they have to dispose of those animals, you know, in a biologically safe manner. And they do so by burning them. And I don't remember if it was Tuesdays or Thursdays, but every Tuesday or Thursday, Fort Detrick, that's what it's called. Whenever you drove onto Fort Detrick, it smelled like barbecue. And then you realized what it was you were smelling. So yeah, I can completely understand what this vagabond is mentioning. All right. Uh, let's see. Do you, do you happen to know who Fidelio is? I, I don't expect it, but you never know. We don't know who Fidelio is at all. Um, and we do know that Fid was up there, or appears that Fid was up there at some point. The vagrant looks at each other surprised. I mean, wasn't wasn't there that Fid lad who used to live under the fifth void? And his hussy kept yelling all like, My Fido! Fidelio, Fid, same deal, right? That, that beats me. Um, how do I get out of here? Clearly they don't know. Well, there's no climbing back up into the crematorium for you. Look at yourself, all burnt and collapsed. But it's no biggie. There's only one way up there, so you won't get lost. First, you'll need to pull this big old lever to open the doors. It's by the busted pipe. That's where the lever is. After that, you just walk through the corridors, the shaft, the old warehouse, and there you are on the surface. All right. Uh, the fact that the incompetence of the crematorium's maintenance staff saved our lives does not make their negligence any less egregious. I will register a complaint. <laughs> All right. We're going to give alms. I'm feeling kind today uh, here for your help with the fire. Got to take care of the people who take care of you. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Something to buy a bit of food with. 
because, well, we used our soup to put you out, you see, and it was only two days old. <laughs> oh, the Vagabond's the best written bit. Uh, all the best during your journey and all may the Emperor help you and guide you out. All right. Let's go ahead um, and we'll go this way. I know you're supposed to go left. We'll go right. Whoops, hold on. We got every. Let's scare up everybody. It's about time. So interestingly enough, we didn't heal up after this. We healed up after other combats, but for this one, we do not. Um, so there, you know, and they've said in the past that the fact that you heal in full after every fight is 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 not a bug. It's just um, they're not there yet, right? They they're still working on uh, longer term processes and plans for healing and, and long term injuries and that sort of stuff. So. Don't expect that to continue. Uh, in some ways, it makes the game a lot less um, difficult at the moment because you do heal up, generally speaking. Now, we do have our Fatigued, which I believe is because we were using our special abilities. Sometimes so if we take a look, you can see we have these abilities here. So I've used this one. Um, it doesn't say anything about being fatigued after you do it, um, but the two people that I've used a lot of these abilities on are the two that are fatigued. So we've used uh, endure quite a bit. Um, I don't remember if I used charge or not, but again, it, it doesn't say anything about being fatigued afterwards, um, but she's the other one. I've used her shot on the run and dash, I think, is what I've used. Um, and again, it doesn't say anything about them doing that, but I think that's why those are the two that are. Uh, we've used her psychic special attacks and her psychic special attacks, but, but that's it. I think some of the more physical ones are what caused that, um, but I don't know. I could be completely wrong in that case. That's where we just came from. Um, may as well walk down here, see if anything pops up now. Again, get used to exploring all the weird stuff, because I'm, I'm going to. I thought the first time that that might burn me when it goes through, but it did not. So we'll make a little leap across here. Uh, we may as well make sure we get back down here again. Um, made her check. Um, how much experience do we have? So we start at level 15 uh, because we're starting after Act 1. So we're already a max. Our base level is already maxed. Um, let's see if we can find that. So we are, we started as a leader. So we're, that's a tier 1 career. And then these would be your advanced careers, right? So we're maxed requirements, current rank less than 15. All right, so, all right, so that's done. I wonder if you can uh, multi-class. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so we're a max letter level leader we've got uh we need 8500 xp we're at 6907 so is it filling up this way i mean it looks to me like this is the solid bit going up maybe we started maybe this is total xp right not not experience on the level right so we've got a third of the xp we need to go for the level so <clears throat> maybe we started at 6000 or something like that and we're rolling up that way. That would make sense, I suppose. Um, you can only upgrade one career at a time. Okay, well, there you go. So then our tier two careers, once we get here, we'll be able to look at assassin, veteran, strategist, and vanguard. Um, and then same same goes for everybody. Uh, we can't go through there. Whoops, now I've got just him going. Let's grab everybody again. Uh, there's loot over here. Uh, I know we can't see it. There it is. Uh, and there'll be a jump over there. So we got to go this way. Why we can jump there and not here? I, I don't know. In a second, we're just going to walk through the stuff. So why can't we just walk through the stuff in the first place? But, you know, it is what it is. All right. Horrible stench reaches your nostrils long before you see its source. A corridor... Well, we've been seeing its source the whole long time. I don't know what you're talking about. A corridor where punction pipes are disgorging streams of murky sludge. In the distance, you see a lever that opens the doors leading outside. The only way to reach it is by submerging yourself in the sludge. Avalard. I'm too old for this show. <clears throat> Cassia brings the corner of her perfumed shawl to the nose. I think I'm going to be sick. Someone's got to go and pull the lever, right? I propose our holy sister is the candidate. A seeker after spiritual purity shouldn't be put off by a little bit of ordinary muck after all. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, so we have an option. Uh, we can send everyone in. My favorite is everyone knows the person who does all the dirty work for Rogue Trader is essential. But, uh, but we'll do it ourselves. Uh, you know what? We're tough. We're, we're an army guy. We're military, right? We were commissar. We're used to having to do the dirty work. That's kind of our job. Um, hard choices are the lot of any leader. So we'll walk out there ourselves. Look around. Try to avoid all of the worst of the floaters. 
I feel sorry for we have to get these stains out. Alright, so we hop up the other side. We find the lever. There we go. Alright, but first, but first we're going to go this way because I don't want to leave any loot behind. We're going to explore. There's our athletics check. Let's grab the goods. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and collect all that. Uh, we could have got one earlier, but we failed the roll. Did we fail our spot check too? Attention to detail. There we go. The there success. we go. That's it. The sound in this spot is suspicious. Like there's a large cavity. I'm gonna. I want to know what this one is. So I'm gonna F5 this one. We're gonna because we're gonna explore. Um, I have not got the. Oh, we have a machine right set now, don't we? I'm gonna use it. The cavity contains a staggering amount of packed trash. It appears it's been gathering here for decades, if not centuries. Uh, once again, we've, we've lost our deal here. Uh, so we lost the item. So we used it and uh, dig through it. Uh, ritual. Under the rubble, you find a small hollow, presumably some worker's cache from the station's founding. Uh, we got some Amsec. Okay. I mean, it wasn't much, but we'll pack it as... Can we not pack it as cart? I guess we'll just take it. Interesting. Okay, well, I don't know that it was worth giving up our machine right for, but... For this, but still. Alright. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to go check the rest of this out. There's the exit there. Uh, closed doors, closed doors. And once again... I won't tolerate weakness. Oh, trap. Uh, we'll just walk up to here. And then we'll try to disarm it. Oh, the iron. There we go. Failed to disarm and accidentally triggered. So I guess that just means we don't get the XP. Uh, nothing else going on. I'm going to do a quick save before we move up. Again, because autosave doesn't... I don't know if it autosaved here. Uh, I don't know if it autosaved there or not last time. But we'll, uh, we'll take a quick look. Uh, he said we had to walk through the um, warehouse. I think we're we're about 35 minutes at this point, though, so I think we'll end this episode here. We'll come back next time to get through the warehouse and, in theory, get back into the rest of the station. So thanks for watching, guys. This is our, you know, kind of our early look um, at the alpha access for Rogue Trader. So as always, thumbs up, thumbs down. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll be back with some more. Thank you. Cheers.